Hey guys, Tony here, and in this video, I'm gonna give you a thorough update of what's going on in my home theater upgrade. I'm gonna cover putting the rack together and placing all of the AV equipment, including the Denon AVC X8500H into place, as well as sleeving all of my cables, which I did during a live stream on Saturday morning with some of my subscribers on Discord, then connecting and plugging everything in and doing a sound test. I'm going to show you my reaction to the sound in this room, so make sure you watch to the end so you don't miss it. If you enjoy content around home theater, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification, as well as considering joining our Discord community. I have links to that down in the description below. Righto guys, there's a ton to get through, so let's get into it. So to start with, we have the construction of the AV rack, which I purchased from VFM Audio up in Queensland. It's a 33RU rack and has plenty of built-in shelving, however I do have some shelves left over from my Sanus rack, as well as some blank panels to fill in the spaces. As a rule, it's important to place your heaviest equipment down the bottom of the rack, such as your UPS, power conditioners and processors, installing your patch panel and networking equipment at the top, as well as putting your servers and players underneath that, leaving some space so that you can fill it with other equipment. I have intentionally left spaces between for heat dissipation, as well as I have a Panasonic UB820 coming in a week or so, and I do have plans for an Electra 7 channel amplifier, so I needed to make sure I have space for that as well. I won't delve too deeply into the components in this video, but something to note is the Santa multi-volt power adapter I have installed at the top which has inputs for fans and a thermostat which can control them. I also have some tube LED lights from my previous rack which illuminate the front nicely. I may invest in some more so that I can get a consistent light all the way down. So once I finished assembling the rack, it was time to unbox the Denon. I had held off for a few days doing this, as tempting as it was, and boy was I excited. This thing is a monster. With so many terminals at the back, I spent some time identifying the ports that I'd need so that I could work out the cable runs and cable lengths for the sleeved cables I was determined to make. All of the speakers were in, so all that was needed now was to finish plating the wall plates and measuring and making the cables, which I did over a live stream on Saturday morning with some friends from Discord. I won't go into too much detail on how I made these cables in this video, but if it's something that you're interested in seeing, make sure you drop me a comment down below. Once I got into the swing of things, I made all of the necessary cables with two in the white gold for the subs. Honestly, it doesn't add to the performance as I joked about in my previous video, but I think it's a nice touch and something that I was determined to add to my setup. Once I had them in, I connected up the Yamaha PX3 amp for the subwoofers in the MX-10 and plugged everything in. Even though the blemishes in the bulkhead had been patched, I still need to sand and paint them. However, I was ready to go on with the testing. So after chatting with Michael from Crix, I had the Odyssey app installed on my phone and it was time to start playing. I won't show the EQ process, but once it was done, I started playing with the curves in the Odyssey app and demoing each time. It's a simple process of adjusting where you feel you need some extra oomph and then playing back a scene from your favorite test movie and seeing how it sounds. This is by no means the scientific way of doing room EQ, and I will be doing a more thorough test once I have everything in place, such as my acoustic panels, screen, and seating. But I'm sure you can appreciate, I was pretty anxious to see how these amazing speakers sounded. So let's give a rundown of the speakers I chose and why I chose them. Initially, I had Klipsch bookshelf speakers, which are now repurposed in my living room, and they do sound great in there, and I'm really fortunate that I've been able to get two systems into my home theater and my living room. So over time and exposure to the Crix lineup of speakers, it didn't take much convincing for me to decide I wanted to go this way. Having grown up hearing Crick speakers in commercial cinemas, I knew that it was the sound and experience I was looking for. Initially, I wanted to go with the MX-5, which is the smallest in the MX lineup. However, after I saw the specs of the MX-10 and how they were more sensitive at 97 decibels, had bigger cabinets, and the cost versus performance was very reasonable, so I decided to go with the MX-10s. So the recommendation for my room was to go with Symmetrix in-wall speakers for my left and right 
and rear surrounds. As well as because I have a star ceiling, I didn't want to cut holes into it, I went with the Atmospherics A20s, which are both woofer and tweeter at an angle that can be aimed at the main listening position. So guys, before I give you a demo of the speakers and my reaction to them, I need to give a disclaimer. It is something that is not always obvious to people, but there is no way that you're going to hear what I'm hearing through your iPhone speakers or through your television. So this is why I'm going with more of a reaction. I will play a demo for you because a lot of people still want to hear something. So I will play the demo and I will give you my reactions. So to give you a description in my own layman's terms of what I'm hearing, the sound is quite loud, but it's very clear. And it's something that I'm used to hearing in cinema. It just feels big. Like I can tell where the sounds are coming from, but they're not at a speaker location. So for example, when I was playing the Atmos tracks, I could literally look up and I could look and the sound was coming between the speakers. Now. My previous clip speakers, I could always sort of tell they were coming from the speaker. Now these ones, I don't know if it's because I have more now, I have six Atmos and I've got four uh, E-level surround speakers. But this time round, the sound seemed to be coming from odd positions. And especially when I was doing the Dolby Atmos test, where you have the butterfly or the leaf flying around the room, it was there was literally no separation between the front and the back. It was. It was like that it was going all the way around the room, which is pretty amazing if you ask me, like compared to what I was experiencing before. So doing all the proper calibration when I don't have acoustic panels, the screen, the seating or anything set up properly would just be a waste of time. So I've done some manual tweaks till I was sort of satisfied with how it sounded. So for the moment, I'm pretty happy with it. This is how it's going to stay. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that progress video. There is a lot more to come in this series of my home theater upgrade. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future updates. So guys, I have not forgotten about the star ceiling video that is coming. Please be patient. It is coming. It is just taking a long time to make. I have to shoot, reshoot, edit do voiceovers, go back and check things, refilm. It's a big job to do this one because I want to get it right so that I cover absolutely everything. The feedback that I've gotten from people is they don't want anything left out. So basically what I'm doing is I'm recording and I'm having to go back and re-record things so that there aren't any steps that are missing in between. So I do appreciate your patience with that video. I do get questions almost daily about when that video is coming. If you like the video, smash that like button for me. And if you enjoy content around home theater, you will catch me in the next video. Bye for now.